In this video, we're going to explore a fundamental concept in physics and materials science, the energy of electrons in different types of materials. We'll be looking at a diagram that explains why some materials, like copper, conduct electricity so well, while others, like rubber, don't conduct it at all, and a special class of materials, like silicon, fall somewhere in between. Let's begin by looking at the overall image. It shows three different scenarios, labeled A, B, and C, which correspond to an insulator, a semiconductor, and a conductor. The vertical axis in each of these diagrams represents the energy of electrons. As we move up the axis, the energy level increases. To understand these diagrams, we first need to understand two key ideas, the valence band and the conduction band. Imagine electrons in an atom are like people living in a large apartment building. The valence band is like the floor where everyone has their own apartment. The electrons in the valence band are bound to their individual atoms. They have a certain amount of energy, but they are not free to roam around the entire material. They are essentially at home. Now, imagine there's a higher floor in this building, an open concept floor with lots of empty space where people can move around freely. This is the conduction band. If an electron can get enough energy to jump from its home in the valence band up to this open conduction band, it becomes free to move throughout the material. It is these free-moving electrons that create an electric current. The space between these two bands is called the energy gap, or band gap. This gap represents the minimum amount of energy an electron needs to gain to make the jump from the valence band to the conduction band. The size of this energy gap is what determines whether a material is an insulator, a semiconductor, or a conductor. Now, let's look at the first diagram, labeled A, insulator. Here, we see the valence band at the bottom, shown as a light gray rectangle. This band is filled with electrons. Above it, we see the conduction band, a dark gray rectangle, which is empty. Notice the large space between them. The text next to the diagram explicitly states, large energy gap between valence and conduction bands. What does this mean? In an insulator, the energy required for an electron to jump from the valence band to the conduction band is very large. Think of it as needing a huge amount of energy to climb a very tall staircase. Under normal conditions, like room temperature, the electrons simply don't have enough energy to make this big jump. Because no electrons can reach the conduction band, there are no free electrons to move around and carry an electric current. This is why materials like glass, rubber, and plastic are insulators. They do not conduct electricity. Next, let's move to the middle diagram, labeled B, semiconductor. Just like the insulator, we see a valence band at the bottom and a conduction band at the top. However, look closely at the space between them. The energy gap here is much smaller than it was for the insulator. Because this gap is smaller, it takes less energy for an electron to jump from the valence band to the conduction band. At room temperature, some electrons have enough thermal energy to make this smaller jump. This means a small number of electrons can escape the valence band and enter the conduction band, where they are free to move. You'll also notice a dashed line in the middle of the energy gap, with an arrow pointing to it labeled Fermi level. The Fermi level is a concept that represents the energy level that has a 50% probability of being occupied by an electron at absolute zero temperature. For a pure semiconductor, it lies right in the middle of the band gap. It helps us understand the electron population in the bands. So, because a semiconductor has a small but non-zero number of free electrons in its conduction band, it can conduct a small amount of electricity. Its conductivity is somewhere between an insulator and a conductor. The fascinating thing about semiconductors, like silicon, is that we can control their conductivity by adding impurities or by changing the temperature, which is the foundation of all modern electronics, from your phone to your computer. Finally, let's examine the third diagram, labeled C, conductor. This diagram looks quite different from the other two. Here, the valence band and the conduction band are not separated by a gap. In fact, they overlap. 
The dark gray conduction band sits directly on top of, and even merges with, the light gray valence band. This overlap means there is no energy gap. Electrons in the valence band are simultaneously in the conduction band. They don't need to gain any extra energy to become free. There is a vast sea of electrons that are always available to move and conduct electricity. The Fermi level, in this case, is located within the conduction band itself. This indicates that there are plenty of available energy states for electrons to move into with even the slightest push from an external voltage. Because there are so many free electrons available at all times, materials like copper, gold, and silver are excellent conductors of electricity. When you apply a voltage, these free electrons flow easily, creating a strong electric current. So, to summarize what we've learned from these diagrams, the electrical properties of a material are determined by its electron band structure, specifically the energy gap between the valence and conduction bands. In an insulator, the energy gap is very large, preventing electrons from reaching the conduction band, so it cannot conduct electricity. In a semiconductor, the energy gap is small, allowing a few electrons to jump to the conduction band with thermal energy, resulting in a small amount of conductivity that can be controlled. And in a conductor, the valence and conduction bands overlap, meaning there is no energy gap. This provides a large number of free electrons, making the material highly conductive. Understanding these energy bands is the key to understanding how all of our electronic devices work and why we choose specific materials for specific electrical jobs.